In this video, we will give you the full instructions on how to use the FastPong device along with the free mobile application. We'll go into detail about every function and show you how to utilize it. The FastPong system is designed for table tennis players of all levels to play and practice their table tennis skills. It's a revolutionizing table tennis training with dynamic visual targets and tracking and analysis of players' data. The training it provides improves your accuracy, speed, decision-making, and more. Using the mobile application allows you to track your data to see how you're improving and analyze your data to see your strengths and weaknesses. You will also have greater control over the system for more advanced exercises and additional features. Without the mobile application, you can still use the FastPong system, but you will be missing out on some of the great benefits. As you take the FastPong system out of the packaging to set the board up, there are a few things to remember. Every panel has a number on the side of the board next to the connector. It's important to know that board number one is the one with the buttons on the side. You should place this panel on the far right corner of the table. To connect the rest of the panels, lay them on the table carefully and connect each panel to the one next to it. Make sure to connect the power connector and the ball sensor cord correctly to panel one of the board. FastPong provides a sensor that will attach to any robot. The ball sensor should recognize when a ball shoots out of the robot. The sensor should be positioned so that the head of the sensor is pointing at where the balls are dispensed from the robot. There is not only one location to place the ball sensor, but many usable places. Each user can try out different locations to find the best spot for their machine. The closer the sensor is to the place balls are dispensed, the better. So, as your robot fires out a ball, the sensor sees the ball come out and it lights up one of the squares on the FastPong device. To test the system and make sure it is working properly, you will need to turn the device on. In this mode, test your ball sensor to make sure everything is in working condition. To test out that each panel is working, you can tap on any target to see if it is functioning. Once tapped, the target should first light up blue and then green. Make sure all eight targets are working properly before continuing. After the first ball shoots out, the display should show the word ball. If not, readjust your sensor as close as possible to the ball dispenser opening. If the display shows the text ball and it appears to glitch, this means that the sensor is either unplugged or in the incorrect port. Simply make sure that the ball sensor is inserted into the port that is labeled sensor and not display. After testing your machine in diagnostic mode, feel free to explore the other modes on our system. This can be accessed manually using the mode button located on the side of panel one on the machine. The first click after diagnostic mode leads to sequential mode. The panels will be highlighted in blue in numerical order and will switch every time a ball is dispensed. If you hit the correct tile, there will be a quick green flash. If you hit the wrong target, the wrong target will visibly flash more. The bottom number on the display shows how many total balls were dispensed and the top number displays how many balls were hit correctly. Another click of the mode button accesses random mode, which highlights a random combination of panels. Again, the panel highlighted changes with each new ball. Another click brings up reaction mode, which is used to test your agility and reaction timing. This mode requires you to use your hands instead of hitting balls. Use your hands to hit each target as it's displayed. The top number will show the total number of targets displayed, and the bottom number shows the time it takes to react to the target. This data can also be stored and accessed in the mobile application, if you are accessing this mode through the mobile application. More on this coming up later in the video. Hit mode again and you've reached the pre-programmed games mode. The first game is box game. A timer starts running as soon as the first ball is dispensed. With each level, the device will light up certain targets. It is the player's job to hit all of the lit targets. If you hit the correct targets, your score will increase. As you hit incorrect targets, your score will decrease. You must try to keep your score in the positive numbers to move on to the next level. With each level, the number of highlighted targets will decrease. The top number is how many balls were shot out at the player. The middle number is a timer counting down how much time is left. And the bottom number is the player's score. The next game available is the snake game. 
As you hit a target on the moving snake, it will become shorter and faster. Whenever you miss a ball, the snake becomes longer and slower. The game ends when the entire snake is gone. The next game is a multiplayer game called Blue vs Green. Playing against an opponent, your aim is to turn each one of your opponent's panels to your own color, which you should pre-select before the game begins. To beat the other player, turn the whole board one color. The next mode is a display mode, which allows the board to light up in different colors. It is the default setting and can be used as an eye-catching way to attract attention to your brand new device. Finally, the last push of the button returns you to diagnosis mode, which we first began at. The second button on the device is a score reset button that you can use in any mode to reset the display. Using the free FastPong mobile application allows users to access more features that can improve any training session. You first need to download the application from the App Store or Google Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application onto your device, it's important that you allow this application to have access to your Bluetooth and location in order to connect to the device and use the features. Before opening and using the FastPong application, always make sure the Bluetooth and location setting is turned on. Once you have the application downloaded, it's time to connect your system to the device. When you open up the application, you will be brought to the main selection page. Click on the Bluetooth symbol on the top right-hand corner of the screen. A list of nearby devices will pop up. Find the correct device and click the connect button so that you will now have control over your system using your phone. The system should light up once you are connected. After connecting your system to your mobile device, it's important to log into the application when using the product for the first time. This will register your system with FastPong. Remember, only register the device under your name if you are the owner. To register the device, select the profile page on the right at the bottom banner of the application. Then select the register your device button to continue. For the profile section, fill out your personal information when prompted. This is for warranty purposes and other future benefits. Auto Connect is automatically enabled when you download the app and set up an account. This means that your mobile device will connect to the machine you've used previously as soon as you open the app. It can be accessed through your profile page. Only one person can connect to one FastPong device at a time, so if you are in a club or venue with other players, switch the auto connect mode off so it is easy to switch between players conveniently. The high quality video setting on the FastPong application is automatically disabled. This will save battery life and take up minimal storage on your device should you choose to use the camera feature in your training. If you would like the application to take higher quality videos of your trainings, simply go to the profile page and turn the high quality video setting on. To change the language of your application, select the language setting and you can choose between multiple language options. If you would like to autosave your trainings, you can enable the autosave setting. When you first begin using the application, you will be brought to the training page. On this page, the robot button will be on by default whenever you open up the application. Make sure that when you are using the system with the robot that this button is enabled. This means that the app will use the robot to time when the ball is released from the ball shooter and determine your score to keep accurate statistics. If you are in robot mode, the next target will appear when the next ball is released from the ball shooter. If the robot mode is off, this means you are using it in multi-ball training or service training. Then, the next target will appear after the player has correctly hit the highlighted target. However, if you want your target to move only once hit correctly, you may also turn off the robot mode but continue to use the ball shooter. To begin playing using the robot, make sure that the robot option is selected. Then, choose the mode that you would like to train in. You may select sequential, random, or custom training. The app gives you quick access to both sequential and random training mode without manually accessing the mode button on the side of the machine. On the training page, the display at the top of the screen will show you a preview of what the system will look like. Once you have selected a mode, click the go button and now your system is already programmed and ready to train. Just turn on your ball shooter and you may begin. 
While training, the application keeps track and displays the player's score and statistics from each session. The score page will display total, which is the total number of balls the ball shooter dispensed, hit, which is the number of total balls accurately hit, accuracy, which is the percentage of total balls hit accurately, speed, which is the speed of the last ball that was hit during the game. You can also switch between miles per hour and kilometers per hour in your profile section. You can also click on the hit and miss tab for more info and statistics on your training session. At the top of the hit and miss tab, there is a visual that displays the ratio of accurate hits and misses per target. If you scroll to the bottom of this tab, there is a graph of the accuracy and speed of each ball during the session. Once you are finished looking at your score page, you can click save at the bottom to save your statistics from the training. To view the details of any previous training, go to the calendar icon at the bottom of the page and click on the date and the specific training you want to view. At the top of the page, your strongest target will be displayed in green and your weakest target will be displayed in red. Speed is given as an average speed from the entire training. The hit and miss tab is similar and will show your strongest in green and weakest in red. To easily share your score with friends, coaches, and social media channels, click share at the bottom and your data can be easily exported. If you would like a randomized training session which only makes use of specific tiles, begin by selecting the tiles you want included in the training and select the shuffle icon so that the tiles you selected will light up in a randomized pattern. Click the Go button and you're ready to begin. Now, if you made a mistake when selecting the tiles, or if you want to cancel the pattern, click the X button to the left of the Save button under the Display panel. You also have the option to save any custom pattern or training. After selecting your desired tile pattern, click the Save icon to the left of the Go button, enter in the name for the training, and click Save. If you would like to see or play any previously saved custom training, you should select the Saved Custom List button, which is to the right of the Custom button. Then select the Go button next to whichever training you would like to recreate. For service training without the use of a robot, you should deselect the Robot button on the main page of the FastPong application. You may then select the desired training or game you would like to complete. Click the orange Go icon and you can begin. For this setting, when you see the statistics page, the speed will not be calculated and all numbers are just estimates because the system cannot detect exactly how many balls were serviced to the player. When doubles mode is engaged, targets will alternate between blue and green for player 1 and player 2. The camera mode button allows the ability to take a video of your training. Manually enable the type of training you want to complete and select go. Set the camera up and make sure you remain in frame. Don't forget to click the camera button to begin recording. Start your machine and when you're done training, select stop. Now you will have the option to save your training, which means your training video will save your stats with the video in your calendar. In your calendar, trainings with the graph icon are without video footage and trainings with the video camera icon are videotaped trainings. Once you have saved multiple training sessions onto your workout history calendar, you now have the ability to compare the statistics from these sessions. First, go onto the calendar tab on the bottom of the screen. Then select the date of one of the trainings you would like to compare and click the compare icon to the right of the training's title. You may now select as many training sessions as you would like to compare. Once ready, click the compare icon on the orange bar at the bottom of the screen. This will compare all of the selected training statistics, such as total balls, accuracy, and speed. This will also show the speed and accuracy from these sessions on a graph underneath. If you want to train your reaction time, go to the training page and select the reaction training mode. This bar at the top of the basic tab shows intervals between when each panel lights up from one second to five seconds. The duration is how long this training will last. You can either choose to have a continuous game if the no time limit button is selected, or only play for a limited amount of time by deselecting this button. If you deselect this button, you can choose the duration of the training in 15 second increments. Other options are doubles, where the panels will alternate between green and blue, and random time, where the panels will light up in random intervals. 
After your drill concludes, your statistics will include the total number of panels you've tapped. Under the real time, you will find how long it took to tap the most recent panel. The average section of the data shows the average time it took to tap each of the panels. To manually control the training while the system is simultaneously being used, as opposed to pre-programming the board, go to the manual tab under reaction timing and begin selecting tiles. Each tile will light up instantly in response to your selection in the app, which makes it perfect for proactively coaching your players. We hope this tutorial helps you use some of the great features on the FastPong device and the mobile application. Begin playing and watch your training improve.